Comment spooky or your house will be haunted tonight. I signed up for DoorDash just to see if it was as good as they advertised. Initially though, it took me a whole month to finally get myself to take on my first delivery. From then on, I did a couple of deliveries a day and was really happy with the results. A couple of months after that, I quit my grocery job and started dashing every day after school and even on most weekends. On this night, I was working extra late because it was a holiday weekend. I was driving from 8 p.m. until 2 a.m., pretty much just going back and forth from the 24 7 McDonald's. A little past 2, I picked up another McDonald's order and went en route to the customer. It was set to be delivered at some sort of warehouse, and in the notes, it said to go in through the side doors and drop it off at the front desk. When I got there, I pulled into this huge parking lot, mostly empty, with only a few semi-trucks. The building was definitely an old warehouse, just a large rectangle with a few windows and a single door at the front. I checked one more time to make sure I had it right to deliver it through the side door, then pulled around to the side and parked. The side door was one of those really heavy metal doors with a small glass window. I looked through that tiny window and didn't see anything but a small and dark entrance room. However, the glare from my car's headlights made the window reflective and hard to see through. I swung it open and was immediately taken aback. It was just as dark as it seemed through the window, and it only had a tiny wall light in the corner that was more of a dim safety light. There was no front desk, so I walked around the corner and stood at the end of a long, unlit corridor. I knew that most places that have night shift workers don't keep on unnecessary lights, but this seemed excessive. I couldn't even see the end of the hallway, so if I were to walk down there, I would be walking into complete darkness. I took my phone out and checked for a third time to see if I'd gone to the wrong place or through the wrong door. Everything seemed right, but there wasn't any way I was going to walk through that hallway. The more I thought about it, the more I realized how quiet the whole building was. No machinery moving or people talking. Not a sound at all. I decided to call the customer. I clicked on their name and dialed the number. Just a moment later, I heard a phone ring echo from the other end of the hallway. After another few seconds, it rang again, but it was closer and louder this time. I stared into this empty corridor and could barely make out the faint glow of someone's phone. Hey, I got an order here from DoorDash. I'm gonna leave it right here for you, I said, setting the bag down in front of me. The figure of a large man started to come out of the dark corridor, but they didn't say anything. I waited another second, but as they got closer, it just seemed unnerving the way they were walking so fast and not speaking. I had this feeling like someone was going to jump out behind me or something. And overall, I was a little freaked out. I turned around and walked quickly out of the door and back to my car. A few moments later, I saw some movement from behind the small glass window on the door just before I pulled away. That whole thing gave me chills and had me call it a night and go straight home. In the end, I chose to believe it was just a weird situation all around, but nothing really happened. A couple of days would go by, and on Monday evening while I was driving again, I got a strange call. It was from the police department. What happened next was more complicated than it had to be. But basically, they questioned me about why I was at that specific warehouse at 2.30 a.m. on Saturday morning. Apparently, they had security footage of my car pulling up. After explaining I was just a DoorDash driver and proving it with the delivery receipt, they told me what was going on. They said that the workers came back from their holiday weekend where the warehouse was not in operation and found a DoorDash delivery sitting in the middle of the hallway. Whoever was there had broken in and ordered with a fake account, which is all scary in its own right. But the creepiest part is that they didn't even take the bag of food. It's pretty obvious that they were looking for something else. I don't know what they wanted from me, but I can only assume that if I had stayed and waited for the man, Something terrible would have happened. I used to work for my best friend's parents' restaurant. I did deliveries for them and would sometimes help clean tables or whatever too. The job itself was fine, but it felt very uncomfortable to have my friend's parents as my bosses. I thought it wouldn't be too bad after a while, but it just never got better. They hated every time something wouldn't go exactly as planned. And they also scheduled me and my friend on opposite days, so it didn't even feel like we worked together which was the whole point of me taking the job. This happened during my third and final month working there. It was a regular night, starting with a few quick deliveries, but I really slowed down toward the back half of the night. 
My friend's dad hated it when it was slow because I'd be standing around waiting for orders, and he'd always be grumpy about it even though it wasn't my fault. Around 8.30, which was an hour since my last delivery, and 30 minutes until the end of my shift, he picked up a phone call and I overheard him say that we could deliver. Afterwards, he made the food and handed me the bag to deliver. But when I searched the address up, it was 40 minutes away. Of course I complained because by then my shift was over in 15 minutes, and this delivery would take nearly an hour and a half. He didn't care. I could tell he was just upset about me waiting around, which again was not my fault. But after a brief argument, I did as he said. 40 minutes was pretty far away for our small town, so I had no idea where this address was. By the time I was two minutes away, it was just before 10 p.m. There were no houses nearby from what I could see until the last minute of the drive, when it had me turn down a small street that led to a row of maybe six houses. They all looked old and outdated, and they were the only houses I'd seen in the last five minutes of driving. As I slowly passed by each house and looked at their numbers until I found the right one, then I parked on the street right next to the driveway. I'm not gonna lie, this place gave me some spooky vibes. It was so far from everything, and the houses themselves were just old and creepy. I got out and brought the bag up to the doorstep, then rang the doorbell. Nobody came to the door, so I tried knocking. It was late, and I wanted to get this over with, so I was getting impatient. As I waited, I looked around the street. There were no cars on it, or in any of the driveways, and none of the actual lights were on inside any of the houses. I carried the bag back to my car and called the customer's cell. They didn't pick up, so I just sat in my car and tried to think of what to do next. They hadn't paid for the food yet, so I couldn't just leave it on their doorstep. Then I saw a light move around inside the house. I got out and saw the light move through the downstairs windows and over to the front door. Then it turned off. A second later, the door opened. There was a young man in his early 20s, standing in the doorway holding a large flashlight in one hand and a grocery bag in the other. I walked up and asked if he had ordered the food. He nodded and apologized for taking so long to answer the door. I said it was all right and tried to hand him the bag, but he just held up both of his hands to show me they were full, then asked if I'd kindly put the food on the kitchen table for him. I wasn't sure if he was joking or not at first because he easily could have just put the flashlight or grocery bag down for a second, but then I realized he was serious. I peeked around him, and from the short entryway, I could tell that there was something off about this place. It was dusty all over, and it looked empty. Once I saw that and thought about the flashlight being used instead of the regular house lights, I was almost sure that this place was a vacant house. The man was still looking at me and waiting for a response. Sorry, I'm actually in a rush. If you could just pay really quick, then I'll leave the bag right here on your porch, I said. He didn't like that answer, and he showed it with his face. He set down the grocery bag and took one step out of the doorway and onto the porch. I backed up to not be too close to him. There was something in his eyes that told me he was about to do something, and I wasn't going to wait for whatever that was to happen. I dropped the bag and sprinted for my car, driving away as the man watched me intently from the porch. I was shaking for most of the drive back, unsure of what could have just happened. Of course, when I told my friend's dad about what happened, all he seemed to care about was that I didn't make the man pay. For that reason, I just quit right there on the spot. I knew my friend would be upset, but I'd had enough of his parents being dissed to me for doing nothing wrong. After that, things were pretty heated, and I was thinking more about that than I was about the man who lured me to a vacant house and likely tried to rob me or even worse. Being so distracted, I never called the police. Not until it was too late anyway. Thankfully, I wasn't dumb enough to go inside the house because if I had, I probably never would have returned from that delivery. I was driving for Domino's pizza delivery. It was a slow night, so I was actually spending a decent amount of time inside the shop waiting for orders to come in for me to deliver. Just after 10 p.m., a man walked in and came up to the counter. He looked like he was in his early 30s, but was extremely sleep deprived and maybe even drunk. My co-worker was at the counter helping him with the order, and I was standing in the back organizing the pizza boxes. After seeing his appearance, I listened in on their conversation. He seemed timid and uneasy about something as he made a simple request for a medium pizza. But then he added on that he'd like it to be delivered, and then handed my co-worker a slip of paper. Right after the order was sent through, the man walked out. The paper just had an address written on it, 
but it was kind of odd because who wouldn't remember their own address? Also, it's not every day that you get a customer coming into the shop to order for delivery to their house. Anyway, 10 minutes later, I boxed up the pizza and got on the road. It didn't take long for me to notice a strange car behind me. It was the only other car on the road, and they were constantly speeding up and slowing down, like they were having trouble staying at the same speed. Once I saw them swerving too, the first thing I thought was that they were drunk, and how the man at the shop looked drunk too. It seems stupid now, but at the time, I really thought it was just a coincidence. When I got to the neighborhood, the car behind me pulled off to the side of the road and parked. 30 seconds later, I pulled into the driveway of what looked like any other house and stepped up to the front porch. I knocked, then knocked again, and after a couple of minutes of waiting, someone finally answered. It was a different man from the one I'd seen at the shop that ordered the pizza. I had a Domino's delivery for Matthew, I said. The man stared at me with very wide open eyes, and I noticed that he looked very similar to the way the other man looked, sleep deprived and drunk. It took him a few seconds to respond. Yeah, yeah, of course, thank you, he said quietly, reaching out for the pizza. I gave it to him and he looked at me like he was going to say something else. But he didn't. He just continued with his dull look. I then turned around and saw a guy in a hood jogging down the sidewalk just two houses away, but he was looking right at us. I quickly went back to my car, and the man at the door stepped out onto the porch like he was going to follow me. I got in and started backing out, but the guy in the hood went right behind my car to block me from leaving. The other one then started running toward me, and in the heat of the moment, I just stepped on the pedal to go in reverse. The guy behind the car jumped out of the way at the last second, and both of them started yelling and chasing my car onto the road. In the streetlight, it became clear that the man in the hood was the guy who came into the pizza shop. With them still running at the front of my car, though, I had to reverse dangerously fast down the street until I could safely make a three-point turn and get away. I called the cops and within the hour, both men were arrested for attempted robbery. Their plan was clearly made while drunk because they thought that by ordering at the shop, we somehow wouldn't think it was them because it was a delivery order, even though we had their name and address. It really made no sense, but according to the record, they had pulled multiple robberies before, and one of them resulted in the victim getting beaten up in a parking lot for no reason. Two drunk guys running at me with bad intentions could have escalated into something horrible but I was glad to have gotten away without any harm, and thankfully, they won't be able to do this to anyone else.